a new model of loop extrusion factors, a new, basically a, a new version of the left model, and, um, and how then that model uh, gives rise to a, a new model for chromatin organization. And then I've, I'll compare uh, our model predictions to experimental high C maps and also to um, experimental uh, chromatin dynamics uh, measurements that I'll, that I'll have shown to you before. Um, so, so the key, one of the key things about this talk is loops. So it's been known for a long time that loops are essential, uh, an essential piece of chromatin organization. But about 10 years ago, uh, this very clever technique was introduced called chromatin configuration capture. And the output of those sorts of measurements uh, is shown on the right here. Uh, it the, it's these contact maps, which give the relative probability that uh, a piece of DNA uh, is in contact with a, a with a distal piece of DNA. So the the more color in that map, the higher the probability. And you see this sort of remarkable phenomenon, where uh, over here, for example, uh, a piece of DNA that's at location three thousand is in contact with a piece of DNA that's at location twenty nine hundred with high prob probability. But if I move over here, uh, thirty one hundred is uh, uh, not, not so much in contact with, uh, or let's say 3050 is not so much in contact with um, 2950. Uh, so there's this sort of interesting structure. And of course, one way that you can realize two distal pieces of DNA coming into contact is by, by making a loop. And uh, so this is really uh, telling you about loops. Um, so, uh, Topologically associated domains are what these uh, uh, features are called, and they're very broadly conserved across uh, uh, certainly eukaryotic uh, creatures, but also they're, they're observed in, um, in uh, bacteria. Um, and uh, uh, the, the current understanding, at least on the length scales that I'll be talking about of these uh, so-called TADs is this uh, uh, loop extrusion factor mo model. And uh, that's sort of uh, pictorially illustrated here. Um, and uh, there, are, there are various actors in this, um, in this model. Uh, key actors are so these so-called loop extrusion factors, which are represented here uh, by these little orange dumbbells. Uh, and uh, these little orange dumbbells arrive on um, the DNA, on the chromatin, and then uh, they extrude a loop. Uh, and in, in the context of these models, they extrude a loop in a, in a bi-directional fashion so that uh, both, both sides of the left are squirting out uh, DNA. Uh, another uh, key ingredient in these models are so-called boundary elements, which are these red and uh, blue factors, and they block loop extrusion. And so loop extrusion uh, in these models can uh, occurs uh, until either uh, the loop extrusion factor, the little orange dumbbells, arrive at a boundary element, or they're also blocked by, they're also blocked by each other. And uh, this uh, down at the bottom here, you can see a comparison between uh, sim simulated, uh, the, the simulated contact map based on this loop extrusion factor model, uh, but also experimental data from, uh, from uh, uh, experiments. Um, so um, uh, the particular factors that have been identified as these agents that perform loop extrusion are so-called structural maintenance of chromatin complexes, SMC complexes. Uh, and uh, I'm going to focus uh, on cohesin and condensin, which are uh, two of these factors. And um, here's a nice uh, atomic uh, representation from Jose's group of, um, 
of what one of these things looks like. This, I think, is condensing. I guess it is condensing. Uh, and then over towards the, um, uh, you can see that the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, these factors sort of form a ring, and the idea is that this ring uh, perhaps uh, is threaded by two DNA, two threads of DNA, and then loop extrusion happens in this, in this fashion. Um, let's see. Um, it's very clear that uh, indeed uh, cohesin uh, is uh, connected to uh, 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 TADS because if you if you rid of uh, uh, these factors by knocking out uh, a piece of them, why then uh, the, the 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 features that uh, Correspond to these these tags, these little square uh, things uh, are, are are much diminished. Um, and then, of course, there are these beautiful um, single molecule experiments that uh, show that if you expose uh, some DNA, which is what you're looking at here, this is a a, 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 a single molecule of fluorescent DNA, which is being exposed to condensin. And what you can see is a, a condensing molecule landing on this DNA and then extruding a loop uh, out uh, uh, here. And uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the time of Twitter and so on, problem solved. And so, uh, so, so, so this is sort of the current uh, picture of how loop extrusion occurs. And what I want to do now is tell you how, uh, how some of this is uh, perhaps not the whole story. Um, so, oh, this is, just, this is just saying that not only does uh, condensin uh, extrude loops, but so also does, does cohesin. Um, but but uh, one of the things that uh, uh, is, is absent in, in the experiments that I just showed you and also is not considered in the, in the loop extrusion factor model as I presented it to you is that uh, DNA in chromatin is, um, uh, comprises nucleosomal DNA. There are, there are nucleosomes all over the DNA. And uh, if, if you noticed um, uh, Jose's atomic structure of um, condensin uh, right next to it for some reason perhaps we can ask him he he plotted a, a nucleosome and what I want to suggest to you is that actually the nucleosome is too large to fit through that uh, little tiny slit in the in the condensin molecule um, uh, in addition to that picture there's actually experimental evidence that while cohesin diffuses on naked DNA, here's a, here's a picture, an experimental measurement of how uh, cohesin is diffusing on, uh, on naked DNA. On, nucle on nucleosomal DNA, it really does not uh, diffuse nearly so much. Um, uh, not only that, uh, in, in other single molecule experiments that's uh, sought to characterize uh, loop extrusion, it was actually discovered that in order to uh, see loop extrusion, it was necessary to abolish nucleosome assembly. Um, and another feature fr from that same experiment is that loop extrusion stalls at a force of 0.6 piconewtons which is really too small of a force to uh, allow for nucleosome ejection. In other words, uh, it may very well be that cohesin and condensin, well, they are uh, motors, but they're not powerful enough motors to be able to eject nucleosomes from, from DNA. Um, uh, if, if, if you go to the literature, then you discover, excuse me, that uh, cohesin loads on naked DNA, but not on nucle nucleosomal DNA. That is to say, uh, nucleosome remodelers are required uh, for, uh, uh, to, to, to clear the nucleosomes away in order for uh, uh, cohesin to be able to land on DNA. 
Uh, and uh, there's this other very beautiful experiment where um, a, uh, a bacterial, I think it's a bacterial polymerase promoter was uh, added. And um, so, so one could be sure that uh, 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 the, the, the T7 polymerase was, was running. And uh, this allowed cohesin, which arrived uh, at this uh, transcription start site, uh, and you can see it here if there's no T7 polymerase, but, um, but when there's T7 polymerase, it's, it's moved. You can see it's, it's gone uh, in, this, in this case. So cohesin translocation is apparently enabled by polymerase and possibly by transcription. And um, so, so now let me turn to, so, so there's a problem with nucleosomes, which I'll, which I'll hope to address. Um, let me tell you uh, now about some experimental measurements that we've, uh, we've made. Uh, so we've attempted to characterize chromatin dynamics by fluorescently labeling a particular gene locus and actually a number of particular gene loci in uh, fission yeast and then tracking their positions as a function of time. And what that allows us to do is to measure the mean square displacement as a function of time. And uh, this is what those uh, data look like. Um, we can uh, fit those data to a power law form. Um, we fit uh, to a form that includes uh, various experimental uh, uh, errors, uh, uh, the effect of motion blur and the effect of static localization noise are included. Uh, but uh, the two sort of interesting parameters that come out of these fits are uh, the exponent alpha, which characterizes the MSD, the mean square displacement. So, so that goes more or less like time to the power alpha. Uh, and then also the diffusion coefficient D uh, which is not a real diffusion coefficient because it doesn't have the right dimensions, but I'm going to call it a diffusion coefficient in any case, uh, just just because it's it plays that it plays that similar role. Um, in any case, when we uh, when we look at uh, the behavior of a number of different loci, we find that the uh, exponent alpha is uh, scattered around a value of 0.45. Um, and um, that's to be compared perhaps with the exponent uh, expected for a, the, the Rouse model, model of polymer physics, which is, which is 0.5. So it's, it's certainly very close to that uh, Rouse model value. Um, so uh, so we, here's uh, just uh, a bunch of MSDs from uh, six different uh, uh, loci. And what you can see is that uh, in, in, in every case, the mean square displacement is rather similar uh, for, all of these, uh, for all of these different loci. Now, one of the uh, nice things that uh, biologists can do is that they can knock out various factors. You can stop them you can stop them working. And so uh, if you uh, knock out either condensin or cohesin, then what we discover is that the mean square displacement goes from this red curve to this pink curve in the case of uh, knocking out condensin, or this brown curve if uh, you knock out cohesin. So uh, what this tells us is that the these, these, uh, these factors are providing a constraint on, on the chromatin dynamics. Um, and so, so what I want to do now is turn to uh, uh, basically a, a hypothesis that we've developed for, um, for, uh, for uh, um, loop extrusion that tries to account for all of the uh, well, basically, it tries to, tries to account for, for, for the role that nucleosomes are playing in this, in this story. And so uh, our picture of, a, of loop extrusion factors is that they're not simply uh, an SMC on its own, uh, because that is not capable, we claim, we, we, we hypothesize, it's not capable of 
uh, ejecting nucleosomes, uh, nucleosomes stop from moving on its own. Instead, we propose that um, uh, a remodeling uh, uh, enzyme uh, actually uh, clears the way for uh, the SMC. And what we've done actually is work out a simple uh, Brownian ratchet type model where the, um, the remodeler ejects nucleosomes, the uh, SMC, this, this, this one part of the ring, uh, diffuses or translocates uh, on the naked DNA behind the remodeler that the remodeler has cleared, and then nucleosome rebinding behind the SMC uh, then keeps the SMC or one leg of the SMC close to the remodeler. And in this way, as the remodeler translocates along ejecting nucleosomes, then the SMC follows in its wake and is pushed essentially behind it by nucleosome rebinding. Anyway, if you uh, work out the details of this, this, this model, which we've done, uh, what you discover is that in fact, the uh, translocation velocity of this composite left uh, is more or less the same as uh, the translocation velocity of the remodeler on its own. Um, to uh, investigate, so, so, so I guess I, I have to, yeah. So, uh, so, 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 so to sort of uh, also bring in the idea that um, uh, 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 LEFT's SMCs uh, can only uh, uh, bind where there's no nucleosomes, uh, we hypothesize that in fact, the SMCs bind only at nucleosome-free gene start sites, transcription start sites. Um, and um, in that context, it's, it's sort of natural to think of the remodeler as, um, as being related to the transcription machinery. And uh, so certainly when we started, we started this project, we thought that, um, why well, yes, uh, uh, maybe the remodeler is, uh, is um, polymerase itself. But in fact, it's, it's clear uh, a, post a posteriori that uh, labs don't stop at gene stops, uh, but, but uh, at least in our model, they're blocked by, um, by uh, other labs. Uh, that are at uh, gene starts and, and can go over multiple genes. Um, so in any case, uh, if, you, if we carry out simulations uh, using, this, uh, using this model where uh, LEFs arrive only at transcription start sites and um, then they proceed uh, from there and are stopped only by them uh, by their uh, by other lefts, then we can more or less reproduce features exp uh, features found experimentally. So, uh, what you see in the bottom, uh, if I can remember my left and my right, uh, the bottom uh, um, left corner of each of this uh, plot here is uh, our uh, simulation, and then the top plot is the uh, experiment. And this is just two different regions. Uh, uh, in the middle is the original LEF model. Uh, and what I want to point out in particular is that um, uh, you, you see here, um, there's more or less a uh, TAD boundary that's predicted more or less by uh, our nucleosome constrained model. But if I go to the original uh, left model, uh, that does not predict this, this, this TAD boundary. Um, a key difference between our model and the original model is that we don't uh, include boundary elements. Although if we do subsequently include, oops, if we do subsequently, oops, if we do subsequently include boundary elements, uh, we do get a slightly better uh, fit. Um, and then, oops. Uh, so then the last thing I want to do is uh, talk about then uh, inc incorporating 
uh, the loops into a polymer model. And so what we've done here is uh, include the output of the loop extrusion simulations that I just uh, tried to describe to you into a Rouse polymer model. And uh, that's what you're looking at now. Uh, in, the, uh, in this particular simulation, uh, there are 30 loops. Uh, in the right hand uh, movie, uh, all 30 loops are shown in blue. Uh, in the left hand movie, it's exactly the same movie, but in this case, only one of the loops is, is shown and you can see that one loop uh, now being extruded. Um, what this allows us to do though is um, calculate the uh, mean square displacement and hopefully, uh, mm -hmm. maybe I have to do it like this. Okay, so here's the, uh, uh, the result of those uh, um, Rouse model simulations. Um, uh, what you can see is uh, in red, is the uh, output of the Rouse model with no loops. And what you can see in blue is the output of the Rouse model, but now including loops. And uh, what you can see is that the, without loops, um, the mean square displacement is higher than with loops. And so that's consistent with our experimental measurements, which showed that when we knocked out condensin and cohesin, which we infer gets rid of loops, why then the mean square displacement increased, uh, just like uh, we see here. Uh, an interesting further observation is that if you calculate an, uh, an expected ex effective exponent, if you calculate this exponent alpha that, I, that we measure, uh, then of course for the, for the Rouse model, Without loops, uh, we find a value of one half, which is uh, certainly what it should be. But if you include loops, you find actually it seems to uh, 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 fall below one half, somewhere in the range of, well, uh, over here it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, but down here it's 0.4, which is sort of tantalizingly similar to, to what we measure in our uh, video microscopy experiments. Um, so I think I've run out of time. I have, so uh, I'm not going to read my summary. Uh, I'll just I'll just stop there. Uh, thank you for your attention. Any questions? Happy to answer any questions. Well, you might as well answer Leonid's questions, but she typed in. Yeah, I, I I'm here, so I can ask my questions. Okay. Um, be, I'm uh, kind of I. Um, I like your proposal that nucleosome remodelers uh, can be associated with loop extruders and help them help kind of clear way for loop extrusion. I'm not sure. A, this is necessary. B, uh, this is clearly not the case for condensing. The reason why this is clearly not the case for condensin is that condensins can form mitotic chromosomes or mitotic light chromosomes in vitro. All you need are chromatinized DNA, uh, two condensins, actually any one condensin is enough, condensin one and condensin two and topoisomerase. Uh, so that was done in, in, by Hirano. So there were several papers by Hirano showing that to compact chromosomes, all you need are condensins and topo two. So clearly you don't need nucleosome remodelers. That was done in, in vitro and in the extracts, in the diluted extracts. Uh, for cohesion, it's harder to say, but if, if remodelers were associated with cohesions, they would localize, co-localize with cohesions. I don't know, is this known? Do you know specific, specific remodelers that co-localize with cohesion? Um. So yeah, that was one of the uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, so um, so this. Uh, let's see. I think perhaps in this paper, maybe this paper. 
no, no, no. That's well, a different paper. paper. So, I know this paper. Yeah. Yeah. This. So this paper, there's, you know, there's this uh, uh, RSC, which is a remodeler, right? Which is co-localizing with this this um, chromatin loader. True. Um, and so, so what? What? Again, Frank Ullman would be best to talk about his work, but. So this work is largely concerned with cohesions that cohesis the chromatids, rather than the excluding cohesions. Yeah. That's so so true. it's a, it's it's a different subclass of this molecule. So I'm not and and there are good evidence that when you shut down. So another proposal is that there is association of cohesions or preferential loading at promoters, and they wanted some evidence of this. Though now this evidence are kind of fading because you can. So so it's possible that some cohesions are loaded at transcription starts sites. Uh, but what actually what this work of Frank Ullman and uh, suggesting his early works is that cohesins actually moved to by by polymerases down down the gene. Yeah. Um, loading of extrusive cohesins at transcription start sites may happen, but it's certainly not critical for formation of TADs and other things because if you inhibit transcription completely, you just abolish transcription by say alpha monitin. The yeah, structure so, does not change. They will use this data, mostly from Aris Liberman's lab, where they inhibited cohesion, uh, sorry, inhibited transcription, yeah. and did high C, and there were like no changes, basically. Yeah, so, uh, so, uh, so I, would, I would answer that by saying that um, it's not transcription itself, it's, the, it's nucleosome depletion that is required. Uh, and nucleus uh, transcription is a is a way to get nucleosome depletion, mm -hmm. but uh, if if there are other ways to do it, that would also work. But that and would suggest in, in, that in heterochromatin you would see no TADs. Uh, maybe. Um, I mean, I, I certainly don't, uh, I don't, I don't think that, I mean, our model is extremely simple, right? And no, it certainly explains the dynamics. So, so that's beautiful that they sort of the presence, basically the loops seem to impose additional constraints when you get rid of them, dynamic changes. But just, a, but, but, but there, it's, it's possible that some cohesions are loaded at promoters yeah. or at nucleosome free regions. Well, I think, I think some of, I mean, certainly, certainly that's true because in some of these papers, they are loaded at promoters, right? This here. Um, I, I mean, uh, a transcription start site is a proxy for a nucleosome free region. Mm -hmm. And so just out, um, of, out of curiosity, are you telling me that uh, condensin can never go across if the nucleosome is there? They're clearly big enough to go over. It. So how do I know that they really have to remove the nucleosome there? Appears like a plausible thing, but uh, is well, that not, no, I mean, if, if you're big enough, uh, like a kilometer opening, like uh, Leonid was just commenting. Okay. So, so if I, I mean, this is condensed, this is cohesive, but the, the, the diffusion coefficient is estimated uh, to be 3,000 times smaller. So, uh, you know, never say never. But three thousand times smaller is a, is a big factor. So, as far as extrusion, actually, Simon, one of the papers you cited, the paper from UT Austin, actually had nucleosomes on DNA, and so extrusion. It's even in the abstract of that paper. So, uh, so they, yeah. do have, they don't have many nucleosomes. Exactly. They do have some nucleosomes. They have. They have. It's, it's, yeah. It's so. Yeah. So they. I think they have. Um, so they're looking at lambda, they're using lambda DNA, right? Yep. And they have on average three nucleosomes. They have very, very few nucleosomes. They have three. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And so I don't really, I, th I think this is somewhat, uh, somewhat misleading figure caption. That, that's, that's more of a proof of a principle. I agree with you. So somebody should really, somebody should really look at what's happening in nucleosomal arrays. I agree. The challenge is that how, how can you have this, 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 whole thing assembled. So, so the, the Dresden group had to deplete nucleosomes. So the problem was that their DNA was too stretched when they had nucleosomes. So they got yeah, but I mean, yes, that's true. But the, I mean, the other thing that was revealed in that paper was the fact that the, 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 the cohesin, I think it was, stalls at 0.6 
pico newtons, which is really a very, very tiny force. Very weird. Yes. And so, so, I so, and so this, they, this they do not have, yeah, they don't have enough force to push nucleosomes away. Right. So they okay. certainly do not have enough energy. They don't consume enough ATP. Yeah. Right. You're absolutely right. So, I agree with you. Know, you. Them is either to have somebody else clearing nucleosomes, as you proposed, or just just have them go through the through the opening, which is six times bigger than a nucleus. That's right. And you are talking about diffusion being much lower, but you may have some active thing forcing. So it's a very complicated mechanism here that can be thinking about it, how these enzymes actually move around. If they are more. But even diffusively, there were, there were there was an earlier paper from Jan Michael Peters' lab where they saw they saw cohesion diffusion on nucleosomal arrays. Um, I so, so I'm not sure I know is that. A thing. I, I would be I interested. Agree. So nobody, nobody have seen extrusion on nucleosomal DNA. That's a very, <laughs> that's a very precise statement. Nobody have experimentally seen it on, on a good array of nucleosomes. I, 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 I'm pretty sure all these groups are actively working on this. Okay. I, I, I didn't quite understand if you finally answered this uh, Murni Onuchi question about the size mismatch. Uh, uh, what, what is your take on that? That the that the um, condensin is you know 40, 50 nanometers in nucleosome is not that big. So how, what did you say to that? I didn't quite catch that. Oh well, I mean, uh, oh actually, it's right here. So uh, so so I mean, I just pulled this from Jose's paper. Uh, what happened to my? I went too far. Um, so so this is Jose's picture of condensin. And this is a nucleosome, and my, my claim was that it, it didn't look like this would fit through here. I mean, this is just a picture. Yes, um, yeah, but uh, but it's, a, it's a, I, I prefer uh, to rely. I prefer to rely on the uh, the Eric Green data that shows that uh, 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 condensin or cohesin does not uh, does not diffuse on uh, nucleosomal DNA. Yeah, but one could argue that because there are ATP binding sites on the motorhead and upon ATP binding, you could have conformational changes in the SMC2 and SMC4 uh, that in fact enlarge the hole much more than what is indicated there. And I don't see that to be a this major problem. This is just problem. a picture. This is a it's coil. Just coil a, yeah, it's just a picture. I, mean, I don't know, but at some point you have to come to grips with the fact that uh, that, 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 that when it encounters the nucleosome, it doesn't work. So you must uh, at least observe some pausing there or something must happen in an experiment. And I have not so far seen anything like that. Yeah, was, I'm, I, was that a question? Or was just a <laughs> it was just a comment <laughs> for me to try and understand uh, this, uh, this, this, you know, this I'll, 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 I'll have to eat my words. We'll have to eat our words. Um, if uh, loop extrusion is seen in single molecule experiments on nucleosomal DNA with one nucleosome per 200 base pairs. No, uh, but okay, you see, but until then, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not eating my words yet. Just okay. a call. <laughs> when you look at the figure that we have here for for that structure. Lots of the contacts here are the ones that we get from DCA and analysis that we put together. So they are true. So the bottom part's true, the top part's true. But the coil coil, you know, they structure the coil coil, but they can interact with lots of things. So basically, the coils can open and close. That's even exactly the point. Actually, it can undergo a large conformational changes. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. This, is, this is not, I'm not really claiming this is evidence. It's just an, it's a nice picture that suits my story. I think we, we've convinced everybody that this is a rather rich subject matter with lots of uh, ongoing uh, issues that people are trying to work out. So it's uh, obviously, thank you, Simon, for a very, very useful talk to sort of show why this field is so exciting. So um, thanks, Simon. Thanks, Simon. Good talk. So we're going to try to keep these talks every month. So let's make sure you guys all come back next month and let's make sure you bring on all your friends. We got a good participation, but let's try to increase it. Thanks is the, everybody. Date, fixed? Is the date fixed for the next month? Yes, Margie? I will send out the date for the next month. And I also want to remind you that next Wednesday at this time, 
the University of Illinois has their online journal club. So there's a link to that on the Paul's website. Um, and you should have received many emails about that also. Okay. And I'll send one out on Monday. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye.